Hi. Excuse the fact that I probably look like a complete state. Um, I love how loads of booktubers always look stunning in their videos, like they actually make an effort. Um, I am not one of those booktubers. <laughs> so today I thought I would quickly do a wrap up of all the books I read in December and then the books that I'm planning on reading in January. And then I also bought some books on Waterstones recently in the sale. If you haven't checked out the Waterstone sale then you definitely should. There's loads of books that are like half price, um, loads of hardbacks, like loads of big YA ones as well. Um, I'll put the link to the sale um, in the description below if you want to check it out. So yeah, I thought I'd also show you some of the books that I bought in the Waterstone sale too. So I'll get straight into it. Um, I'll start with the books that I read in December. I want to start trying to do this each month because I love uh, seeing people who do this each month, like they kind of wrap up all the books that they've just read and I'm reading a hell of a lot more now so I think before it would have been a bit pointless me doing it because I only read like a couple of books in a month but I read uh, quite a few in December so let's go. So the first two are The Christmas Aurus Books by Tom Fletcher um, I love these books so much. They're like middle, kind of middle grade books, um, but I really love Tom Fletcher anyway. I've always been a McFly fan since I was like eight or nine, um, so I've always kind of followed everything that they do and that sounds creepy. I didn't mean that in a creepy way. Tom Fletcher is someone who I have always kind of like followed his work and I love his books as well, so um, I read The Christmas Aurus a couple of years ago, like the year it came out, I think it was maybe like 2016 or something, and I adored it so much and vowed to read it every Christmas because it just makes me feel so festive. Um, Tom's also signed it in the front, which um, is really cool. So I reread this and then I read the sequel, which came out this year. It came out in about October this year, um, and that is The Christmas Horus and The Winter Witch. I love this story so much. Um, it is quite, it's a bit darker than the previous one. Um, this, like, The Christmas Horus is quite a light, fun story. Um, but this one went a little bit darker. It's almost like it's kind of grown up a little bit with the kids that are reading them. And it goes into time travel and, like, Christmas is banned because of things that have happened. And it kind of goes into, um like corporations taking over Christmas and taking the magic out of Christmas and um, kids are kind of starting to not believe in Santa and Christmas anymore because of this big corporation, like toy company taking over Christmas. And it's quite a big uh, sort of real life topic that it explores, but in a way that it's still kind of magic and set around um, trying to make kids still believe in Santa and Christmas. So um, yeah, it's kind of got some themes that adults can uh, look a bit deeper into, but for the kids it's still just going to be like a fun Christmas story. So yeah, really good. I posted my full review of this on my blog just before Christmas, so I'll link that in the description below. Next was one that was highly anticipated going into the month, and that's Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I read Six of Crows, um, in November and instantly wanted to read Crooked Kingdom. Like I went to Waterstones, picked it up and I put it straight on my TBR for December because I loved Six of Crows so much. So yeah, I decided to read this and it was so good. It's a really good follow up to Six of Crows. Um, I, I think I rated it maybe four compared to the five I gave Six of Crows just because I think I just loved Six of Crows so much. But this was still so good, um, so devastating. And it does a really good job of kind of wrapping up all of the stories and kind of all of the characters arcs. And uh, yeah, it was just such a good follow up. We got even more backstory for all of the characters um, that followed on from the first book. You learn so much more about the characters um, and some of the other characters as well. I feel like a lot of Six of Crows focuses on Kaz and his backstory um, and this kind of brings a lot of the other characters backstories into it as well so you get to learn about some of the people that you maybe didn't learn about so much in Six of Crows. Really good follow-up. I always worry with sequels that they just won't be as good. Uh, they kind of just will feel a bit forced but 
no, this <laughs> Lee Bardugo is just incredible and I can't believe I've never read any of her work before. Um, I now have the rest of her books on my TBR. <laughs> Another one I read in December is Let It Snow. You can't really see the cover because it's like a shiny cover. There you go. Uh, and this is by John Green, Maureen Johnson and Lauren Miracle. It's split into three uh, kind of almost like novellas. Um, they're like short stories, um, but each of them have uh, their own chapters and things. So it's kind of like three novellas that make up, kind of, uh, supposed to make up one story. I started reading this in December last year um, and I'm on about 2018 now, not 2019. 2019 is now technically last year, that's weird. But I started reading this in December 2018, read the first story in here and then just kind of didn't read the rest of it and I don't know why. There's not, I don't think there's really any reason why I didn't um, pick it up and carry on reading it. but. I just didn't, so I decided that this Christmas, it was on my Goodreads currently reading for the entire year, so I was like, I need to get this off my list because it's annoying me now, it's been there too long. Um, so I decided to finish it this Christmas and I absolutely hated it. <laughs> I gave this two stars. The only reason I gave it two stars rather than one is because the first story in this was kind of enjoyable, like I liked it a lot more than the other two. The second one, the first one was by Maureen Johnson. I haven't read any of her books before, um, but I enjoyed her story. The second one by John Green absolutely sucked and I hated it. And then the third story by Lauren Miracle was slightly more enjoyable than the second one, but I still hated it and wondered why it was even in the book because it was so pointless. None of the stories really go together. Like they could just all be their own books. It's almost like they each had these festive stories that they'd already written and they just thought, oh, let's just put them in a book together and then we can kind of really just throw them together at the end and make them connect in this really loose way that doesn't really work. I'm not a fan of this book, if you can tell. <laughs> my full review is on my blog. I think it was like 2000 words or something. I kind of went a bit crazy with it. It turned into a big rant review. If you like this book, then I'm sorry. Um, but I just didn't, I'm not a fan. I just, I don't like it. Um, I don't know what I'll do with this book now. I don't know if I'll just keep it as a rem um, reminder of the fact that it was like an entire year that it took me to read it, or if I'll just give it away. I'm not sure, because it is quite a cool edition of it. Um, like the shiny cover is really cool. Just not a fan. If you want to see exactly why I didn't like each of the stories, then uh, the link to my review will be below. And then another one. It's been really funny because 2019 was such a good year for me reading five star books or like four star or any books that I just really loved. Um, I had so many books that have turned into like my favorite books now because I, I just read so many good books in 2019 get to December and I read two books pretty much in a row that I didn't like. <laughs> this one was a big disappointment. It was kind of my biggest disappointment of 2019 um, because I was expecting to like it. It was kind of hyped up a lot for me and I expected to like it and I just didn't. And that's The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. <sighs> I read this for my a book club that I go to in Waterstones. The person that runs the book club um, was hyping up this book and I was kind of like, oh, it sounds so good, like I'm, I'm excited to read it. I just, it just wasn't for me. I know a lot of people really enjoy it. There are quite a few positive reviews on Goodreads, but there are also a lot of negative ones where I was just reading them like, yes, this these reviews pinpoint what I didn't like about this book. The story is really interesting. Like, the story has so much potential. It's basically, like, spies live in this dimension that's basically a massive library, and they travel to different dimensions to steal books that are kind of like valuable books that they think need to be looked after in this library. Um, so whether there's kind of like books that, uh, like in this one it focuses on um, Grimm's fairy tales but there's an extra story that doesn't appear in the rest of the Grimm's book like the Grimm books um, but the book they're trying to find is a really super rare one that has an extra story in it and they're trying to find this book 
to take it back to the library and every dimension that they travel to has different quirks so you might have one that has like um uh, vampires or there's like certain types of dark magic in some of them and the one that they go to in this is kind of like a an alternative london it's like a kind of steampunk victorian um london that has magic and yeah the story sounds so cool like the premise of it is really intriguing and that was why I was so excited to read it but there's just something about this book that I just couldn't get into I think it's the way that it's written I'm not even particularly sure how to pinpoint what I don't like about the writing but it's all it's just written so I don't know like it almost feels like it should be a middle grade because it's written a bit juvenile like it's the way that it's written sounds like it should be written for children but then there's also things like they talk about sex and they talk about like there's swearing in it and there's like a creepy man that is trying to harass the main character and it's really weird like it just it's a really weird mixture of like adult writing like adult kind of language used but the whole story feels like it's written for kids and like all the dialogue is just so unbelievable like you wouldn't it doesn't sound like conversations normal people would have and like the main character i have no idea how old she is um like i thought she has this apprentice that joins her and he starts talking about wanting to sleep with her and she then starts considering it like oh maybe I do like him and stuff but I thought the way that her dialogue is written she genuinely sounds like she's about 50 and her apprentice is like a teenager so I was like this is very weird <laughs> I'm just not a fan I can't remember what rating I gave it maybe two or three I think I gave it three because my reasoning was that I gave let it snow two and if let it snow got two then this was definitely better than that I think yeah, maybe two and a half. I think two and a half will be my rating for this. So finally, to follow up after a couple of really disappointing books, I read a book that, oh my God, I adored so much. I loved it as much as this author's previous book that I also just, it became my favorite book, one of my favorite books this year. And that is The Starless Sea. Ugh. This book, <laughs> I wanted to read this before the end of 2019. Like I really wanted to read it before the end of the year, but it got to my birthday, which was the 27th of December. And I was just like, I'd hardly started it. I think I was maybe like 50 pages into it or something. So I was like, there's no way, it's like a chunky book, it's huge. And I was like, there's no way I'm gonna read this in like four days. But I did, I managed to, I couldn't stop reading it. Um, I sat there on my birthday and read it. Um, I sat just for the rest of the year, like the rest of the days leading up to New Year, I just sat and read this book constantly. I couldn't stop. And I read it, I finished reading it on the evening of the 31st of December. So uh, talk about just about scraping my TBR for the month. Oh my God, such a good book. I didn't know how it would follow up after The Night Circus because The Night Circus um, like I just said, turned into one of my favourite books of the year. Uh, and I didn't know how this would follow up. Like, I saw a lot of people talking about it and saying that it was incredible, so I was, like, pretty hyped to read it. Um, and I ended up adoring it. Again, it's become one of my favourite books. So, Erin Morgenstern, I've read both of her books this year, and they've both become two of my favourite books. Not even just this year, but I think ever. So, I... I think I definitely now have a new favourite author. This is just stunning. Like, this is the Waterstones special edition. So, like, it has this cover. I'm not a big fan of the regular UK hardback cover. Um, so I got the Waterstones special edition. And then it's just, the spine is just gorgeous. And then, like, the pages are just beautiful. And then under the dust jacket is just stunning as well. There's three different colours. You can get this one, like, a tealy colour and then a pink one. Um, I got the dark blue one and this book is just stunning and I now have two versions of it because I also got the Illumicrate um, special edition. Worth it. <laughs> uh, I was worrying that I would read it and be like oh I now have two editions of this book that I didn't like but no I adored it 
I loved it so much. If you can read this book, then definitely do. So that was everything I read in December. Yeah, it was a varied month, definitely. Like I had some books like The Starless Sea and Crooked Kingdom, things like that, that I completely adored. And then I also had a couple of books that I wasn't a big fan of and they kind of disappointed me a lot. So I'm gonna move on to my next pile of books that are on my bed next to me. Um, and this is my TBR for January. So first up, and the one that I'm currently reading, um, I'm on the blog tour for this on the 9th um, and I'm going to be reviewing it and I also have a giveaway so um, so I'm currently reading Paper Avalanche by Lisa Williamson um, this came out last year I think in hardback but it's come out this year in paperback and they're doing another blog tour for it for like the re-release paperback this is really beautiful like it's got yellow sprayed edges to match the writing on the cover the giveaway that I'm going to be doing is I should have brought the books up with me but I didn't. Her other two books, there is The Art of Being Normal and All About Mia. They are also re-released as new paperbacks to match this. Um, so all the paperbacks match. They all have sprayed edges and all the covers are kind of this sort of style. I will be doing a giveaway of all three paperbacks on my blog and that will be up on the 9th of January when I have my blog tour stop. So if you're interested in winning a set of three paperbacks that look like this of all of Lisa Williamson's books then uh, head to my blog on the 9th and the giveaway will be up there. I'm not sure how long it'll be open but I might do it for a couple of weeks. But yeah I'm currently reading this, I'm about 50 pages in and I'm really enjoying it so far. I think I'm gonna try and get through more of it later on today. So yeah it's a good start to my January TBR. Next up will be Circe by Madeline Miller. Um, massive book of 2019, like so many people read this book and raved about it. I am reading this for my Waterstones book club, the same one as The Invisible Library. We didn't meet in December because Christmas, um, so we decided to do two books. We're doing The Invisible Library and Circe for the same book club meeting. Uh, so I need to read this soon. I think my book club is like maybe the 11th of January, so I need to get to this soon. I have, I kind of don't really know what this is about. Um, Greek mythology is something that I don't know a lot about, so it's gonna be interesting to see if I can get into it. I'm hoping I can, otherwise I'm gonna be so negative at my next book club meeting, considering I really didn't like the Invisible Library. Fingers crossed, I enjoy Cersei. <laughs> Next is a book for another book club and this is my own young adult book club. I have my own young adult book club also in Waterstones um, and we meet monthly and the book that we decided to do for January because of the TV series on BBC is Northern Lights. Lots of people have been watching the His Dark Materials BBC TV series recently and I really want to watch it but I want to read the book first before I watch the series so we decided to read Northern Lights for the book club. I am quite excited to read this because it's one that has kind of, like I've always known about it. I remember, um, I, I kind of remember reading it when we were in school, um, but yeah, I can't remember a lot about it. I just remember we watched the American Golden Compass film and people are saying that that's not good compared to the book so I don't know I'm interested to go into this and see what I think about it so yeah I'm gonna be reading this soon. Next as I mentioned when I was talking about um, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom I have Shadow and Bone. Um, I can't wait to read these books I'm excited. I know a lot of people say that Six of Crows is better than the Shadow and Bone series but then a lot of people also say that they prefer Shadow and Bone to Six of Crows so I'm getting so many contrasting opinions. I'm excited to see myself, what I think about it. Um, I have these editions that are just so beautiful. Like these covers are just stunning. And also these are, if I can get to the right page in the book, <laughs> these are limited edition signed. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this. Um, my aim is to try and read them before the Netflix show comes out. I'm not sure, I don't think there's a release date for that yet, is there? I'm not sure. But yeah, I want to try and read all of the Grisha the rest of the Grishaverse books before the Netflix series comes out. I've got three more. Uh, next on the list is The Prisoner of Azkaban. At the moment I'm doing a Harry Potter reread. So in November I read The Philosopher's Stone. In December I read The Chamber of Secrets. I forgot to put Chamber of Secrets on my list of books that I read in December. 
Oops, that was another one I read. I read Chamber of Secrets, but I don't need to talk about what that's about because I assume everyone knows what the Chamber of Secrets is about now. Yeah, I'd read that. Um, so next in January, I'm gonna read um, The Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, we're getting to the more chunky Harry Potter books now. So uh, I feel like I need to make sure I leave enough time to read this. I'm excited to carry on with this reread because the later in the series the books get, the more I kind of forget a lot of what's in the books compared to the films. And I don't know why, because I would have probably read them more recently than the earlier books, but I just remember the earlier books a lot better than, like a lot more than the later books in the series. So I can't wait to reread them. And Prisoner of Azkaban is one of the best films, so I'm excited to read this. I mean, I've read them all before. Uh, I've read all the Harry Potters years ago, but that's why I can't remember a lot of what they're about because I read them like, I don't know, six plus years ago. So uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they compare to how I kind of remember them and how they compare to the films. And then finally, I've got two arcs on my list for this month. Um, these are both coming out quite soon. Um, I've got The Sky Is Mine by Amy Beschel. I'm never sure if I say her name right, I'm sorry if I don't, but um, The Sky Is Mine, which comes out in February, so I've got a little bit of time to read this. I feel like if I can't get around to reading this this month, then I'll read it in February and that'll be fine. And then I also have a massively hyped one, but one that I've also seen people aren't a big fan of, and that's Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera. I was lucky enough to get a proof of this at Yelk this year. Um, the queue to get these was mental. Like, they were giving copies away every day of this, and I managed to get one. A lot of people have been saying that it's not great. Um, they've been saying that he should kind of, that Adam Silvera should kind of stick to contemporary rather than writing fantasy, because this is his first fantasy. But, I mean, as someone who enjoys contemporary anyway, People are saying this feels very contemporary rather than a fantasy. That kind of sounds perfect for me um, because I'm not a big fantasy reader still. Like I'm trying to get into it more, but I'm still not a big fantasy reader. So uh, I'm kind of intrigued to see if I enjoy this because I kind of, I'm getting a feeling that I will, but who knows, I'll have to see. I feel like a criminal book blogger because I have never read an Adam Silvera book. Especially someone who says that I, I, like I've always said I like contemporary YA. I have never read an Adam Silvera book, so this will be my first one. Maybe not the best place to start, but I'll see. So, that's my January TBR. I have a couple of extras that I'd, lo I'd like to get to if I can, but that is, for me, a lot of books for one month. So I'll see. I am kind of flying through books at the moment, but I do go back to work um, next week, so uh, I will see how much time I get to read once I start working again. Finally, this is getting long, I'm sorry. Um, the final part of this video uh, will be a quick book haul. Um, I'll just quickly show you the books that I got from the Waterstones sale. I kind of went for a couple of books that I wouldn't usually go for. I feel like that's gonna be my one of my reading kind of resolutions for um, 2020. I want to read books that I don't usually go for. So I've started with a couple in this Waterstones haul that I know aren't the kind of thing I'd usually buy, but they sound really good and I'm excited to read them. Some of the books that I've read in 2019 have been books that I wouldn't usually read. So, um, and I've loved them. Like the kind of light fantasy or Magical realism, I think, is definitely my thing at the moment. So things like The Night Circus, Starless Sea, um, Last Bus to Everland by Sophie Cameron I've read recently. There's a lot of books that are that sort of magical realism thing where they're, they're based in reality, but they have a kind of magical, fantastical element to them. That's been my favourite thing. So I think I've got a couple here that are going to be that sort of thing again. I'm so excited to see what I think of them. I got... Uh, the Binding by Bridget Collins. This is one that Waterstones are recommending a lot at the moment. I'm wondering if it was one, I think it was maybe their book of the month or the year or something, I can't remember, but they're recommending it a lot and I am a sucker for being recommended books. 
Um, especially what Waterstones do, where you get to the checkout and then they're like, oh, how about adding this to your basket as well? And I'll just be like, sure, why not? So this sounds really good. Uh, the edges are like kind of purple and it's just, this book is just stunning. Like I'm hoping I love it just because the book is so stunning. Um, and there's a thing on the front that says that there's like exclusive Waterstones content as well. So um, yeah, I'm excited to read this. This I've seen a lot of people talk about, so I can't wait to read it. In case you don't know what this is about, I'll quickly read the synopsis. Emmett Farmer is a binder's apprentice. His job is to handcraft beautiful books and within each to capture something unique and extraordinary, a memory. If you have something you want to forget or a secret to hide, he can bind it and you will never have to remember the pain it caused. In a vault under his mentor's workshop, row upon row of books and secrets are meticulously stored and recorded. Then one day, Emmett makes an astonishing discovery. One of the volumes has his name on it. That sounds so cool. Anything to do with books, um, I'm sold. Like Pages and Co, uh, really love. Um, Starless Sea is all to do with like a library and books, um, so cool. And I find that anything to do with books in a story, um, I really love. So yeah, this sounds great. I'm so excited to read this. I hope I can get to it soon. Next on the list is The Deathless Girls by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. I haven't read any of her books before, so I am looking forward to reading this because it sounds really good. Let me just quickly read the synopsis. On the eve of their divining, the day Lil and her twin sister Kizzy are to discover their fate, they are captured and enslaved by the cruel boy of Volker. I don't know how you say that, I assume that's it. Far away from their beloved traveller community and forced to work in the harsh castle kitchens, Lil finds some comfort in the storm-eyed Myra, a fellow slave who she's drawn to in ways she doesn't understand but too soon she also learns about the dragon, a mysterious and terrifying man of myth who takes girls as gifts. They may not have had their divining day, but the girls will still discover their fate. This sounds a lot more fantasy than I'm used to, but it also sounds really good. Um, and it's been suggested a lot and it was also half price. So why not? Um, this is also another stunning book, like the cover and then like the back. And if you look, Look at this. Are you ready to see the most beautiful book under the dust jacket? So this is on the inside and this is just so pretty. Like the patterns in here are just so stunning. And then look at this. Just look at it. This is under the dust jacket and oh my goodness, it's beautiful. And like this is the spine. Um, it's just stunning. So yeah, this is another one that I'm kind of I hope I love just because the book is so stunning. Yeah, so like I said, it's a lot more fantasy than I'm used to, but uh, I am still quite excited to read it at some point <laughs> when I can fit it in. The next one, which I'm so excited about that I finally have it, is The Second Pages and Co by Anna James. Uh, this one's called Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales. I loved the first Pages and Co book. Um, it was in my list of five star books. Um, if you want to watch the my video, by the way, of all my five star reads of 2019, um, I will link it in the description below. But uh, yeah, I Pages and Co was one of my favourite books, or like one of my five star books of um, 2019. So I'm really excited to get to this one. And I think it'll be a nice quick read as well, because it's sort of a middle grade. The thing I, one thing I love about these books is uh, like all the illustrations. For example, this page. Like, the illustrations in this book are just so pretty and they um, they just add so much to the book. I love it. So, yeah, I'm really excited to get to this. Um, I'll probably get to it maybe in February because um, it should be a nice quick read. I then got one that is just... It was really cheap. I think it was, like, £4 or something in the sale. I just... I love the sound of this. Like, it just sounds so fun. Um, and it's really short. Like, it's this small. And that is... Fairy Tales for Millennials by Bruno Vincent. It's basically, he's taken 12 different fairy tales and spun them to kind of match the issues and things going on today that millennials face. I'll just quickly read the synopsis. In these stories, you'll find Sleeping Beauty waking up woke, the nanny goat's gruff getting trolled, and the three little pigs explaining that realistically, a house of straw is really the only way a first time buyer can get on the property ladder. Goldilocks discovers a darling little porridge pop-up, the Pied Piper shifts his content strategy to attract more followers, and Hansel and Gretel meet a witch with a disruptive new approach to clean eating. 
So it just sounds so silly and it's like so short, like it's just this tiny little book. How many pages is it? It's like 160 pages. I'm excited to read this. I've just realised in the about the author section at the end, he also writes, um, I don't know if you've seen the uh, famous five books rewritten for like today's issues. Um, there's one called Five on Brexit Island. He is the writer of those, which I've only just realised. So uh, that's really cool. Um, yeah, I'm excited to read this. I might even just kind of get into it this month. And then the final one, which is kind of something that I didn't even expect to own, but since reading Six of Crows, Lee Bardugo has jumped up to my list of authors that I really want to read more of. And this is a book that you might have guessed what it is already. Uh, it came out in 2019 to such a massive hype. People have been talking about it all year. People either adore it or I've also seen people hate it, so I don't know. Um, but it's something that I didn't expect to own, but now I do. Um, and that is Ninth House. I don't tend to read things that are like horror or like dark. And I know people have been saying that this is proper, like, dark, like, really dark stuff. It isn't the kind of thing that I would usually read. It just sounds really good. I read the synopsis and I was kind of like, that actually sounds like something that I want to read right now. Uh, how I'll get on with all, like, the really dark stuff, I don't know. I'll have to see. I'm kind of still just like, oh my god, I actually have this in my hands. Like, I've only ever seen it on, like, social media, like, Instagram. I just thought it was half price in the Waterstone sale. If I'm gonna buy it at some point, I may as well buy it now while it's half price. <laughs> Again, stunning under the jacket. There's, like, a kind of compass thing here. And then the spine is also really pretty. In case you're not sure what this is about, I'll quickly read the synopsis of this too. The mesmerising adult debut from Lee Bardugo, a tale of power, privilege, dark magic and murder set among the Ivy League elite. Alex Stern is the most unlikely member of Yale's freshman class. A dropout and the sole survivor of a horrific, unsolved crime, the last thing she wants is to cause trouble. Not when Yale was supposed to be her fresh start, but a free ride to one of the world's most prestigious universities was bound to come with a catch. Alex has been tasked with monitoring the mysterious activities of Yale's secret societies, societies that have yielded some of the most famous and influential people in the world. Now there's a dead girl on campus, and Alex seems to be the only person who won't accept the neat answer the police and campus administration have come up with for her murder, because Alex knows the secret societies are far more sinister and extraordinary than anyone, than anyone ever imagined. They tamper with forbidden magic, they raise the dead, and sometimes they prey on the living. That, to me, just sounds, like, so intriguing. Like, secret societies and things, it's just, like, the idea of it is just so intriguing. So, um, I just know that people have been saying that it's really dark. I haven't read a great deal of stuff that is really dark. Like, I mean, for the past couple of years, my thing that I've been reading most is, like, YA contemporary. So, yeah, I'm intrigued to get to this. I really want to read it soon, if I can. I feel like my whole February TBR is just going to be, like, this entire new haul that I've just got, um, because I just want to read them all right now. So there you go. That's it. That's all my books. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you read in December and if you have anything planned for your January TBR. I'm finding it really useful keeping a TBR because it's making me read things that I have wanted to read for ages um, and it's making me, it's kind of stopping me from getting distracted and reading other things. If you've read any of these in my haul or any of them on my TBR for January, let me know what you think of them because it would be really good to chat and um, see what we think of them. So yeah, give this video a like if you liked it, uh, don't if you didn't. If you want to see more videos, then click the little subscribe button because it would help me out a hell of a lot. I'm trying so hard. Another one of my resolutions in 2020 is to try and grow my channel a lot more. I'm just really inspired by so many different booktubers at the moment and I'd love to try and grow my channel more. So I've got so many videos planned that I'm really excited for. So if you can subscribe, that would mean a heck of a lot and it would help me out. Um, it would know that people actually want to watch my videos and yeah, that would be great. And I will see you soon with a new video. Bye.